Exam three. Exam three. Okay. So we have a uniform cylinder has a mass of this and a radius of that, and the moment of inertia rotation about its axis is given by one half mr squared. Cylinder rolls without slipping up an incline. If the translational speed of the cylinder at the bottom is four meters per second, what is the maximum vertical height above its initial position does the cylinder reach before it's starting to slide back down or roll back down? Okay. So we have. Ooh. I should write it on the correct surface. There we go. One half m of v square for our translation kinetic energy plus one half m one half i omega square for our rotational kinetic energy is equal to m and gh. How far up it goes? All right. Given that we are uh, as we are given the velocity, I shall convert omega to v. So we have one plus one half. I is one half m little m little m r squared. Omega is v on r squared squared. Get the one half mv squared out here. Mv squared. And that is equal to mgh. All the m's cancel. Be careful about canceling these m's because it is possible for you to have, say, a mass hanging off a pulley, in which case the m's may not be cancel. Um, <laughs> we'll, leave that, we'll leave that there. Actually, what we'll do is consolidate. So we have a quarter and a half, so that's three quarters. Three quarters of v square is equal to gh. Um, therefore, h is equal to 3 and v squared divided by 4 g. 3, and come on, 3 times the velocity given of uh, 4 squared divided by 4 times 9.8 in execute. 1.9 to two meters per second. Nope, meters. Here. Um, I wonder about these other possible answers. If instead of that we said one half, um, then we would get, uh, do, 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 do. Then we get one over two instead of three over four. So this 81 is if you only if it was only kinetic energy, if it was only translational energy and no rotational energy. And I'll bet that the next one. Yep, this is for if you only had rotational energy. And here. I don't know what that one's about. That's something different. I'll bet it's one though. Nope, not even that. Two? Not that either. I don't know. I don't know what that one is. But these are this is the distance you get from uh, from translational energy and this is the distance you get by connect by rotational energy. And this is how far you get when you have both of them. A uniform sphere has mass of two kilos and a radius of 0.05 meters. The moment of inertial rotation through about its axis is two fifths mr squared. It is rolling without slipping on a horizontal surface. If the translational speed of the sphere is two meters per second, what is its total kinetic energy? All right. So it wants uh, one half m v squared plus one half i omega squared. We are going the v again. Therefore, I shall go ahead and substitute in with that, as I did above. One half, two fifths, m v squared. Um, r squared here, v on r goes here. Squared r's cancel each other, so we end up with one half. This cancels into one. One half plus one fifth is 
uh, 0.7, so that's uh, 7 tenths. 7 tenths mv squared. All right. So 0.7 times 2 times 0 0.0. No, don't care about that. Um, okay. Velocity is 2. So that's uh, 2 times 2 squared is 8. It is 0.56. It's 5.6. We'll get math yet. 5.6 joules. A large disc with a radius of 0.2 meters is mounted and fixed in by a frictionless axle at center. A light rope is wrapped around this end the, and a uh, block of, two, of 20 kilos is suspended from, from the free end of the rope. The system is released from rest and the block descends with, with an acceleration of 4 meters per second squared as the rope unwinds without slipping. What is the moment of inertia of the disc for the axis along the axle? Okay. This is about forces. Okay. So we have, um, <laughs> we have mg pulling this way. We have t pulling that way. Um, and then so we end up with the torque going that way. T r. <clears throat> And this is equal to I alpha, also known as I A divided by R. Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. Therefore, the tension is, and this, uh, so do, 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 do. Tension is equal to. I A divided by R squared. Okay, so then over here, setting up this set, system of equations where we have the sum of forces, we have um, I would like my acceleration point in the direction, positive direction, therefore mg is positive minus tension pulling up is equal to ma. Um, <laughs> um, so then mg minus i a on r square is equal to m a. Um, what, we, what we got? Uh, we're looking for i, right? Moment of inertia of the disk. Okay. So we end up with i a on r squared is equal to m g plus a um, move this to the other side multiply by r square on a we have all that 20 kilos times and I want to make sure that our units cancel out so we have a mat or come out right so we have mass times radius squared, so that's a kilogram. Radius squared is a meter squared. And then acceleration divided by acceleration and it goes away. So these units cancel, and so we end up with the correct units of kilogram meter squared. All right, now, now I'll do that. Um, 9.8 plus 4 in times the radius uh, 0.2 squared divided by acceleration of 4. 2.7, uh oh, shoot. Oh dear. Hmm. Uh, four, yeah. Uh oh. That's not good. 2.76 kilogram meters squared. Oh dear. Huh.
Ha ha ha. What is the put my sign in there? 1.16. All right. So why did these signs not work? Um hmm. Interesting. Let's see here. Accelerating down, MG down, tension up. Interesting. This here, this is exam three for number four twenty. Exam three, no answers. Exam three answers. Preview. Yeah. Interesting. So we have um, acceleration going down. We have force grab going down. We have acceleration coming down. Tension pulling up. So these signs are correct. Tension here is just the torque. These these are all correct. These all must be pointing in the same direction. The torque is uh, the force times the radius. Those are in that direction times I alpha. Those are in the same direction. I on A over R. Do 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 do. Huh. Well, that's weird. Huh. I suspect the correct answer is none of the above, but Dr. Ford is saying it's C. Um, hmm. I have a sneaky suspicion that, like the last pro um, problem 20 on exam 2. 2020, he done messed up again, but this is definitely not quite the same. I mean, professors screw up, screw up their exams from time to time. It's quite unfortunate what happens. Um, my advisor, Dr. Rapp, um, actually accidentally had a leaking vessel in his ideal gas problem once. Um, Dr. Tizer once overdetermined a problem so that there's two correct answers depending on which way you went through the, pro through the problem. Uh, likewise, when Dr. Rapp did his leaking um, vessel, um, ideal gas law vessel problem, um, there was two ways to solve it, and so you get two different answers. Um, and so every now and then, and oh, and there's, and there's another one um, where I had a colleague of my, a, uh, another grad student who's um, teaching a summer class, where um, his problem. He's failed to specify which direction his problem went, and depending on which direction you picked, you end up with two different answers. Um, so, professors screwing up their answer, uh, screwing up qu uh, questions is not unheard of. Uh, so the problem, the answer that Dr. Ford is looking for is 1.16, and that would imply that this is plus, or rather, but it would imply that this is a minus rather than a plus, and if this is a minus, that means that this is a plus. And for this to be a plus, that means that the tension is pulling down with gravity, which it is not. Um, and that would mean the acceleration would have to be greater than 9.8. So I don't know what Dr. Ford, why Dr. Ford ended up going wrong like that, but he did. And so I believe that the correct answer is 2.76 kilogram meters squared, whereas Dr. Ford is looking for 1.16 uh, kilogram meters squared. So yeah, that happens from time to time. That happens. Uh, I suspect that uh, he ended up going with both C and E. I s <laughs> e is uh, there for people who are bold <laughs> to uh, ignore the professor's errors. <laughs> Which happens. It happens. We don't like it when it happens, but it happens from time to time. All right, everything's looking good, good, excellent. Okay, page two. A uniform disc with a radius of 0.04 meters starts from rest and then rotates with a constant angular acceleration of two radians per second squared. Uh, what is the linear speed at the point of the rim of the wheel when the wheel has turned through 36 radians? 
Mm. So he's looking up for a V equal to R omega. And omega is equal to 2 alpha theta. So just as as with the linear cases that we that I went through with two exams, for every um, for every x there is a corresponding theta. For every v there is a corresponding omega, and for every a there is a corresponding alpha. And so what we've done here is um, what I've done is basically gone back to the uh, energy conservation equation v squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2ad and we made, made appropriate changes uh, let's see here so we have right we have an acceleration we have distance we have a uh, a dis a angular distance travel an angular acceleration an angular distance travel and that gives an angular velocity in radians per sec in radians per second <clears throat> so omega is equal to the square root of 2 alpha is 2 Theta is 36. That turns into 2 by 6 is 12. So this is 12 rads per second. Uh, so here we have our omega, and we need to multiply that by 0.04. Uh, okay. Not being entirely familiar with those things, I'll bet that it comes at the 30. Nope, can't be 36. 12 times 0 0.04 is 0 0.48. 0 0.40. Nope. This is 0.48 meters per second. A uniform disk is rotating through with an angular speed of three revolutions per second about a stationary axis of center. The kinetic energy of the disk is 30 joules. What is the moment of inertia for this disk? Okay. So we have that kinetic energy is equal to one half I omega squared. And we want I. So we need that to be two kinetic energies divided by um, Omega squared. Yes. Uh, okay, so 2 times 30 joules divided by 3 revs per second. I need to convert that to radians so there are 2 pi. Try that again. There are 2 pi rads. Per one revolution squared. Revolutions cancels with revolutions. Radians are unitless. Um, can uh, joules is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. Seconds squared cancels with seconds squared, leaving me with a kilogram meter squared. Units work. Yay. So we have 2 times 30 divided by, begin, 3 times 2 pi and execute. Squared and executed. 0.6169 kilogram meters squared. A uniform disk is rotating about a stationary axis, an initial angular speed. Uh, disc is 28 rads per second. Torque is applied and this slows down. Disc comes to rest as after five seconds uh, af uh, after the torque is applied. Uh, after this starts slowing down, how many revolutions did the disc turn through before stopping? Okay. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So. V plus V naught half times T is equal to distance. All right? Yeah. So doing our conversion, we have omega plus omega naught over 2 times T 
is equal to theta. We are told, oh boy, 28 rads per second plus 0 divided by 2 times uh, 5 seconds times uh, then we need to convert radians to revolutions and there are there is one revolution per 2 pi rad rad cancels rad revolutions we're left with seconds cancels inverse seconds we're left with revolutions overall yay so 28 halves is 14 times 5 divided by 2 pi is 11.14 revolutions Next, four small masses of 0.2 kilos each are connected by light by light rods 0.4 meters long from to form a square. What is the moment of inertia of this object for an axis running through the middle of the square parallel to the two sides as shown in figure? All right, so moment of inertia for a point like particle is equal to mR squared. Um, they all have the same r, 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 and the same mass. So we end up with 4 mR squared. Um, r is one half of this length because the full length is 0.4 meters. Mm. There we go. So we have four mass of 0.2 kilos, radius of 0.2 meters squared. <clears throat> four times 0.2 cubed is 0.032. 0.032 kilogram meters squared. Um, I will bet that four times that answer is provided. It is. 0.1, uh, 0.128 is provided for people who uh, decide that the radius is actually equal to the length of the rods. And uh, 0.032 is a great answer. A rigid bar that is one and a half meters long is connected at one end to a wall by a frictionless hinge. The bar is held in horizontal position by a light rope that runs between the other end of the bar and the wall. The angle is 37 degrees. Tension in the rope is 40 newtons. For an axis that for an axis at the hinge was the torque due to T. Okay. It wants this torque here from this point here. All right. So uh, torque is equal to F cross D, where this is our D, and of course F is F is going off this way. Um, so that means that this is in fact an, a, a uh, vector. It's actually a pseudo vector. Um, but we end up with F D sine theta. F is 40 newtons. The distance is one and a half meters. And sine of 37. What the heck is that? Well, I got a better idea. Sine of 37 is um, the smaller of three-fifths over four-fifths because 37 degrees is a favorite number for good reasons. Um, 40 divided by 5 is 8 times uh, 9 
is 72 halves is um, 36 no meters. Let me double check that. Can I math it in my head? I don't know. We're about to we'll find out, won't we? 36. Ha! -ha! This is right. All right. So that immediately scratches one, two, three, four. Um, I'll bet these are for. Um, so this is if you. I bet 60 is if you put no. Uh, if you don't put the sine theta. Yep. And then the 48 is if you pick the four fifths, the wrong angle. Yep, it is. And then clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, we go this way, which is counterclockwise. Oh boy. Uh, one of these days, clockwise and counterclockwise won't make any sense because death of the an of the analog clock. Anyhow. A uniform bar with length L is attached to a wall by a frictionless hinge at the lower end. The bar is held at an angle of 53 degrees above the horizontal load 53 degrees by a light rope that runs to the top of the bar of the wall. If the tension in the rope is 24 newtons, what is the weight mg of the bar? Okay, so here we have that the sum of torques is equal to zero. Um, we have a torque coming down from weight, so that is mg half, mg l half, um, and then we need that would be sine of 30 centuries minus um, the force applied by tension at full length l sine um, 53 degrees pulling in gravity pulls down and so it gets the complement angle and the tension pulls in and so it gets the parallel angle theorem right is that what it's called parallel angle theorems yeah um, <laughs> and this is equal to zero and uh, we want mg of the bar so we want the mg here so actually replace mg with w um, L's cancel out, which is why it was not given to us, and that's fine. And so we end up with W is equal to 2 T sine of 53 degrees divided by sine of 37 degrees. Um, because of trig, this is uh, 2 T sine of 53 degrees divided by cosine of 53 degrees which is equal to 2t tangent 53 degrees punching that on my calculator 2 times the tension of 24 uh, times tangent of 53 is 63.69 Uh, uh, 0.7 0.7 newtons um, another way you could probably figure that out would be 2 times the tension 24 newtons and then tangent of 53 um, that's a 3-4 triangle 3-4-5 triangle um, 4 is opposite so that should be 4 thirds um, and then you could work that out, and let's see where that lends us. I'll bet that lends about where I expect four thirds. Yeah, that's an approximation, of course. And that's 64 newtons. If you want to, so let's hear uh, 12. Nope. 24 divided by 3 is. Um, This year, eight times two is sixteen times four, three two sixty four. Yep. 
but you know you're off by just a little bit because uh, 53 is not quite the uh, 345 triangle. 345 triangle is a very exact angle which is not easily rounded. Anyways, a wheel with a radius of 0.3 meters is free, is free to rotate about a, a without friction about a stationary frictionless axle at a center. The moment of inertia of the axle is given to us to be 20 kilogram meters squared. Right rope is wound around the wheel, and a constant force, constant horizontal force of 40 newtons is applied to, to the free end of the rope. The rope unwinds and the wheel rotates. If the wheel is initially at rest, what is the angular speed? Of the wheel four seconds after the force has been applied. Okay. Um, so this would be a torque is equal to I alpha is equal to FR. We need the alpha out of that. And so that ends up being F 40 newtons. R is point three meters divided by I of twenty kilogram meters square. There is a kilogram meter per meter per second squared here. Uh, so the we end up with the kilogram cancels with this kilogram. We end up with a meter meter is meter squared canceling with this meter square leaving us with a per second squared. <clears throat> so that is 40 times 0.3 divided by 20, um, also known as 0 0.6. 0 0.6 inverse radius, in, inverse second squared. Um, but radians are unitless. So 0.6 radi radi radians per second squared. Um, four seconds after the force has been applied, after four seconds of doing this, four times 0.6 is tw 24. So that should be 2.4 ra radians per second. Yep. A woman stands on a horizontal platform that is free to rotate by its vertical axis at its center. The woman holds, is holding identical heavy objects in each of her outstretched arms. The system of, of platform, woman, and weights at a moment has a moment of inertia of about the axis of 40 kilogram meters squared and a total kinetic energy of 80 joules. The woman that pulls her hand, ar arms in and the moment of inertia is reduced to 20 kilograms meters squared. What is the kinetic energy of the system after he or she pulls in her arms in? So this is an, it will, uh, this is an inelastic rotational collision. So first off, I initial omega initial is equal to I final omega final. We need the omega final? Yes. I initial omega initial divided by omega I final is equal to <coughs> um, 40 over 20 times, oh, bugger, whatever, omega initial. So whatever error this is, it doubles. The omega doubles. Hmm, I'm gonna do this a bit more weird. Um, do, 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 do. So then we go, we have a one half I omega squared. So we have one half I halves, one half I initial, but the omega doubles. So we have two omega initial squared. And so we end up with four half uh, the halves cancel out <clears throat> two I initial omega initial 
squared. Uh, so that means that the, our energy, our kinetic energy has doubled, so we should be at 160 joules. <sighs> um, I'm going to prove that. I'll put a little more effort into that to make to show that I, in fact, did that correctly. Um, so we need this I, this omega initial. So uh, do 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 do. This is let's here. Let's write this somewhere else. Um, <laughs> um, one half forty omega initial squared is equal to eighty. Uh, so that is twenty. This is 20 here. 80 divided by 20 is 4. Square root is 2. 2 rads per second. Uh, therefore, this here works out to 4 rads per second. So her, um, her energy final is 1 half uh, 20 times four squared. Um, so four squared is 16 times a half times 10 is 160 joules. Ta-da! I have done it right the first time. Wow, my voice is dying. We'll take care of that at some point. A large platform with a radius of 0.6 meters is rotating about a vertical axis with a center angular speed of 5 meters, five rads per second. The well, inertia of the platform is 40 kilogram meters squared. A steel block with a mass of 60 kilos sits on the edge of the platform and is at rest with respect to the, assist to the platform. So it's also rotating. The steel block can be treated as a point mass. What is the magnitude of total angular momentum for the of the of the system? of the platform plus block. Moment initial of the platform is this. Ah, okay. Angular momentum. So first we need an I. Raz per second. Uh, I is a meter is kilogram is, um, is mass times radius squared plus any other I's. So it is uh, 60 kilos at 0.6 meters squared plus the 40 provided 40 kilogram meters squared um calculator says this is 60 times 0.6 squared plus 40 is 61.6 kilogram meters squared. L is I omega. Um, the omega is five rads per second. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and type that in. Type that in times, point, uh, times five, 308. Kilogram meters squared meters squared per second. Hmm. Okay. More void people in the void. A large wooden wheel <clears throat> with a radius of one half meters mounted at, on a vertical axis at its center. The wheel is at rest. A bullet with a mass of 0.015 kilos is moving with speed of 200 meters per second in a straight line toward the rim of the wheel. For an axis at the center of the wheel, what is the magnitude of angular momentum of the wheel plus bullet before the bullet strikes the wheel? Once well, angular momentum. Okay. So angular momentum of a point source is 
MVL before the bullet strikes at that location. Uh, yeah, which you can always. It is possible to show. It is possible to show that uh, this is MV. What is called B. B is the impact. Oops. Try that again. Is the impact parameter. Um, so it is pointed at the do 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 bullet mass speed uh, straight line towards the rim of the wheel. Yes. Um, so in this particular case, our impact parameter is R. All right, punch those numbers in. 0 0.015 times 200 times one half meter is one and a half. Looks like he forgot to move his decimal places around. One and a half kilogram meters squared per second. A uniform bar with length of 0.8 meters and mass of 3 kilos is connected at one end to a wall by a friction cinch. The bar is held in a horizontal position by a light rope that runs through the other end of the wall. The rope is, makes a 37 degrees angle bar, but is maintained in the direction of the vertical component of the force that the hinge exerts on the bar. Okay. Uh, <laughs> ah, you've my paper, right? Oh, come on, really? Uh oh. Well, that's unhelpful. That is most unhelpful. Oh boy. Okay. We are going to have to do something about that. Oh, come on. Uh oh. Oy vey. Really? Oh dear me. I good gravy. Alright, my mouse is not answering to any hail whatsoever. We may have to oh. or not. Yay, okay. Uh, almost had disaster. We shall continue on. Where was I? Right. Um, so we need uh, sums of forces in the x direction to be zero, sum to be zero, sums of forces in the y direction to be zero, and sum of torques to be zero. I'm not sure I'm going to get through all three of those. I don't know if I need all three of those to answer this question, but um, I know at least. Some of the forces in the y direction will be needed. Um, let's see here. Do, do, do. So I got a force here. This is gravity. I have a force hinge going that way. And I got a force tension going this way. Uh, I think we will start with uh, the sums of torques being zero. So we'll start with the torque. Uh, put the torque at the pivot so this becomes zero don't care about that so I end up with mg half L minus T L sine of 37 degrees um, so the tor uh, this torque is out of the way at the end 
And, but uh, 37 degrees is going to be uh, 3 fifths. So we'll get rid of that and replace it with 3 fifths. Um, L, this is equal to 0, therefore the L's cancel each other. And then we find tension. Tension is equal to 5 sixths mg. Right? Yeah. Okay. So now I have the tension. So now I know that I go this way with 5 sixths of the g. So now I need to know how much vertical is actually going on here. So now I do the sums of forces in the y direction. Uh, so I have that. That is mg pulling down. Uh, plus, minus, minus. 5 sixth mg uh, pulling up again, so that's also 3 fifths. Um, plus minus, we'll put a minus on this, fh in the y direction, and this is all equal to 0. <clears throat> Fifth cancels with 5. 3 cancels with the 6 and becomes a half. Uh, okay. So then we end up with 1 half mg minus fhy equal to 0. Therefore, fhy is equal to 1 half. All right, mg pulling down positive, tension pulling up negative, fy being negative, yes, mg half. Uh, okay, so I believe I now have all the information I need to answer the question. That is mass of 3 times 9.8 divided by 2 is 14.7. Fourteen point seven newtons up. Let me guess what happens when you double that. Yep, it does. So the twenty nine point four is for people who think the hinge takes all the force, and you have to decide for yourself which which direction that's through your signs to say. Does it say do your signs say up or down? A simple pendulum consists of a long, light string with a small mass attached to its lower end. If the mass is pulled to one side, so the string makes an angle of 10 degrees with the vertical end and then released with a period of 2 seconds of motion. If this, uh, if this repeated with the string with an initial angle of 20 degrees, the period of the motion is then what? <laughs> is then what? Uh, so uh, period is equal to... Um, <laughs> let's see here. Let me just pull up the equation sheet. Let's see if it's here. Okay. The equation sheet is not here. Let's go check the final. Uh, might be on this one. Uh, do 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 do. No, not that one. This one. Here we are. Uh, period is two pi square root of l divided by g. Two pi square root of g divided by l. No. L divided by g. There we go. Those things work. <clears throat> All right. There is nowhere in here where the angle or the amplitude of this period makes an appearance. 
Therefore, if it was two seconds to start with, it shall be two seconds to end with. Uh, the close here is due to the fact that um, as you get this, uh, as you, you get the ball, as you get the uh, bob further and further away from the equilibrium point, um, the less appropriate the small angle approximation makes, and you start getting into elliptical uh, integrals, and it becomes a a, uh, um, a numerical problem rather than a uh, uh, rather than a simple problem, and. Uh, we are not into that, but it's it's far enough away that action uh, it is still approximately two, but it is no longer exactly the same because things get weird. Things get weird when you start have to when you start dealing with the uh, uh, cosine rather than the uh, square. You start dealing with cosine of theta rather than with the square of theta because small approximations. All right, next one. Oop, I should right select on it. There we go. A block with a mass of eight kilos moves on a horizontal friction surface. The block is attached to a horizontal spring with a force constant this much. The block is pulled away from its equilibrium position and released so that it has simple harmonic motion. During this, its motion, the maximum speed is two meters per second. What is the amplitude of the motion of the block? All right, so we have one half mv squared, and that's equal to one half k x squared. Basically energy initial is equal to energy final. Uh, halves cancel and then so we need the x squared right? Yes. Mm, yeah. So we end up with x is equal to the square root back it up just a touch is equal to v times the square root of m over k, right? Yes, m over k. Um, this is also equal to v omega, by the way. Uh, so then, right? Yeah, angular frequency. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no, it's not. It's v over omega. That'll make the units cancel, right? Inverse second, inverse second, they both cancel. We get them here. Anyhow, uh, velocity is two meters per second. Square root of mass eight divided by two hundred. Oh, but this still comes out fairly nice. Square root of eight divided by two hundred. I think it'll come up point one, point two times 2 is 0 0.4 <clears throat> hmm. alright a steel wire with length of one and a half meters and cross-sectional area of this Hmm. This is elastic materials. It is probably not on your exam. Um, but elastic materials will often get the short end of the stick for uh, this particular class. So I shall go ahead and explain it so you can have it if you were to ever see it again. Um, <laughs> come here, final exam. No, don't do that. Um, it's probably here. Nope. It's on this one. And it's not on that one because I moved the the uh, things around. It's on this one. Young's modulus is equal to the force through the cross section, right? Force perpendicular to the cross section divided by a divided by the ch ch time and I got ways to take care of this watch this trick control C that control V that mm. turn that off 
Do, 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 do. Okay, make it there. And now I scroll all the way down to where we're actually at, here. And now I shall move it to somewhere more useful, here. Okay, and now I drop it like a hot. There we go. So we have Young's modulus is equal to this to the stress over the strain, I believe it is. Um, and we are given the Young's modulus. We are told let's see here, let's read through it. A steel wire with length of this much, so we're given the L naught, cross sectional area of this much, so we have the A, hangs vertically from the rigid support. Young's modulus is provided. Large metal steel block with a mass of 80 kilograms is supported, suspended at rest from the lower end of the wire. So now we have the force perpendicular. What is the increase in length of the wire due to the block hanging from it? So it was looking for delta L. Okay. So this is F um, L naught divided by A delta L so I'm going to delta L so delta L is equal to mg is the force provided L naught divided by A and the Young's modulus punching the numbers in Actually, before we get to the numbers, let's look at the units on this thing. Make sure the units make sense. <clears throat> so we have a Newton between the mg. We have a length for the L naught. The length is in meters. Divided by area, meters squared. And the Young's modulus is provided to us to be in Newtons per meter square. Meter squared cancels meter squared. Newtons cancels Newtons. And it comes out in meters yay all right now I'll put the numbers in here all right uh, let's see here mass where you go 80 times 9.8 times the initial length one and a half divided by area 4 e minus 6 times the modulus of 2 e 11 and an execute Point zero zero one four seven meters. We are given the answer in centimeters, so we need to multiply that by a hundred. Point one four seven centimeters. Okay. <clears throat> A block with mass of 0.8 kilos moves in a horizontal frictionless surface. Uh, block is attached to a horizontal spring. Block is pulled away from its equilibrium position, x equals zero, and released, so that makes simple harmonic motion. During its motion, the acceleration of the block is minus six meters per second. When the block is at 0.03 meters, what is the force constant of the spring? Okay, so we are told that m a is equal to kx. Um, mm -hmm. And there's my sign here. So we have, I want k. So we have minus ma divided by x is equal to k is equal to minus mass a point eight kilograms acceleration of minus point six meters per second squared in divided by point oh three meters. Meters cancels with meters and we end up with kilograms per second squared. Hmm. Is that the right unit? I don't know. We'll get that like that. Plus plus. 0.8 times 0.6 divided by 0.03 is 16. 
Huh. Did I do that right? Uh oh. Interesting. Interesting, says I. 16 uh, kilograms per second squared. Really? Interesting. Point eight. Oh, points. There we go. Let's get the decimal places in the right spot. It's six meters per second squared. No, not point six meters per second squared. There we are. That makes much more sense. Very good. We are in agreement on that, at least on the number. Is a newton per meter the same? That's a kilogram meter per second squared divided by meter. Meter cancels meter, leaving us with a kilogram per second squared. These are indeed the same. Very good. Units work out. Last page. A block is moving in simple form of motion on, on the, in a spring. If the amplitude of the motion is doubled, which of the following statements is not correct? If the amplitude is doubled, what changes? Uh, period of the motion decreases. Period is not dependent upon motion. Maximum speed of the block is increased. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see here. So if so, we have, let's see here. Do 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 do. There is a way to prove that. Um, velocity v max is equal to a omega, um, and so if the a is doubled, then the uh, v max will also double. Um, <laughs> if then we go to I'll skip the next one on here. We we'll go down to acceleration um, a max. It's possible to show that that is um, the square of omega. And so if the amplitude is doubled, then A max is also doubled. And so the acceleration, oh, not correct. Um, so I marked out the wrong one. We'll look we'll at that. So that means the acceleration doubled. So that's correct. If the acceleration doubles, then the force, oops. Try again. Put a mass here and a mass here. If the amplitude doubles times mass, then the force also doubles. So that increases. And then the maximum kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, which is the same as 1 half um, kx squared. And so if amplitude doubles, then the maximum kinetic energy quadruples, which means that these are correct, all these are correct except for the period. The period has no dependence upon the amplitude. So that's that's the one that is incorrect. A block is moving in some form of motion in a spring. The period is two seconds. And the, what is the frequency of the motion? All right. Uh, frequency is equal to one on period. So that is one on two seconds, which means that is a one half hertz. Just like so. All right, that is the end of exam three.